Hello and welcome to another video from the robotics classroom at Voyager Middle School. Check out our other video tutorials on topics about 3D printing, design, and programming and electronics. Today what we're going to do is we're going to do a project in 1-2-3D design and it's going to be a vase project. So you're going to make a hollow vase that is 3D printable. It's a very, very quick and easy project and it will teach you how to use the loft feature on uh, Autodesk 1, 2, 3D design. So what we're going to do is we're going to envision something that can be, and even if we can't quite envision it, we can still make it. Um, we're going to make this vase by thinking about what sort of slices make it up. So here are the slices that make up this vase. And then we're going to put those all together, hollow it out, and 3D print it. So we're going to start with a blank canvas here. What we're going to use is we're going to use sketching tools. So there are lots of sketching tools. You can drop just shapes, sketch shapes, or you can draw shapes using these tools. You can draw individual lines. We'll cover these when we do our next project, how to do some of these individual lines. You can change the way the, the, the shapes are look using some of these tools. But the sketches work like this. You're going to take, let's say we're going to start with, um, we're going to start with a hexagon. So I'm going to choose the sketch a polygon tool. And the first thing you notice is that you get a pop-up that says, click on a grid, sketch, or solid face to start sketching. The idea here is you want to be able to sketch on a flat surface, but 1, 2, 3 design lets you pick which flat surface. You can pick by just clicking on the blank grid. You can click on an existing sketch to add or edit to that sketch. Or you can click on a, a face of a solid so you can sketch in a different angle. So if you wanted to make a vertical sketch, I would first drop a box primitive and then sketch on that box's face um, to make a sketch that sticks out perpendicular to this grid. But since I don't have anything and I want this flat on the grid anyway, I'm just going to click on the grid to get started. So now it says it's giving me tips about how to use the polygon tool and I also get this green check mark. The green che check mark, if I hover over it, says exit sketch. That's how I close my sketch. You can also tell the sketch is open because it's added an extra layer of grid around the outside of my axes. Um, it's very important to close your sketches afterwards because it's very confusing if you're inside a sketch and you don't know you're inside that sketch. So another way to close a sketch, because sometimes this green arrow can be hard to find, this little green check mark can disappear on you, is you just switch to the primitive tool and drop a box primitive someplace. That way you know you're definitely not sketching and you can just delete the box later. So I'm going to draw a sketch. I'm going to click to, center to specify the center point of my polygon. I can pay a little attention to what the radius is here, or I can use the fact that these grids are, these major grids here are 25 millimeters uh, square, so that's about a, a square inch. So I can sort of set up how big I want my vase to be. I can click to finish my sketch, and you can see I'm still inside the sketch because I still have the green exit sketch check, but my uh, hexagon is done. So I can keep drawing hexagons, or I can switch to different um, sketch tools, but I'm going to close this sketch to make sure it's all closed. So now what I want is, I want a lot of different things. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to draw another sketch. This one I'm going to use a circle. And I want this circle to be right on top of here and then I'll move it up from there. But I don't want to do this because you'll see it says click to edit sketch here. I don't want to add this to my existing sketch. I want them to be separate sketches. So my first click is going to be out here on the grid to open a brand new sketch. That didn't tell me anything about my circle other than my circle exists in a new sketch. So now I can use this and I can draw a circle and I can draw it about the same size if I want. Close that sketch. Now I've got two sketches. To change the sketch, you don't want to click on the edges. You don't want to edit the edges. So you need to click on sort of, I would say, the meat of the sketch. Not exactly the center because again you could edit the center. You want to click on the inside. And if you do that, you should get a little widget that pops up like this that gives me some sketches, sketch options. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this upward and I'm going to grab that z-axis or y-axis depending on your preference uh, arrow and just move it straight upwards. Um, so this way I have two slices in my sketch. And I can click outside, always left click outside to finish things like a move. So now I've got two. Now I'd like to make some more so what I can do here is I can make copies. It's really important to understand how to copy. It has to be on the keyboard. You press Control c Control v to copy-paste, just like the standard Windows copy-paste. Um, if you're on a Mac, I assume that that's going to be a little bit different for you, but, you know, I'm sure you can figure it out. You're going to make a copy. You can move it up. You can give it a little twist, maybe. Um, give it a little rotation twist. 
Um, you can also make copies and move them and then scale them afterwards. So I'll make this copy, I'll move it up a little bit, and I want my vase to narrow at the top. So I'm going to choose the scale option and scale my sketch in a little bit. Once you're happy with the placement of these, and you can even do some crazy um, tilts and branches and do all sorts of stuff, you can select all the sketches in order, hold the shift key, make sure you orbit if you can't see enough, make sure you zoom to make sure that you're not selecting the edge, it's very easy to select the edge. You've got to select them all in order and select the insides. You choose from this menu, you choose loft, and that will connect these surfaces with a solid as best as it can. So since I did them in order, I got profile one, two, three. You can see up here it says make a new solid. With any of my solid construction tools, I can also merge with things that already exist, subtract from things that are there, or intersect. I definitely want a new solid in this case, so I'm going to click outside to finish. So now I'm really in pretty good shape. I've got the shape I want, I just need to hollow it out. So I need to select this top, but there's a sketch in the way. So to control, to make things easier without having to delete my sketches, I want to keep them around. I can just go over to this eyeball over here and choose to either hide my solids, or in this case, hide the sketches. But they still exist, they're just hidden. Um, I'm going to choose this object, and then I'm going to hover over this top. If you happen to click the top at first, you need to move around until you can select just the top like this. Select just the top. When I use the shell tool, I need to select which faces I'm going to remove, and then I can choose to shell that. Now you can see this is only going to be 0.6 millimeters thick. That's probably going to be too thin for 3D printing. I probably want it to be at least a millimeter so that it's thick enough so that the walls don't have little holes in them and things like that. I click outside to finish and I have a 3D printable vase. Check out our other videos to learn more about the different other construction techniques that you can do in 123 Design. Go ahead and try and 3D print this. Uh, to 3D print in 123 Design, you can click on it and export it as an STL. Or you can, if you have Mesh Mixer installed, you can send it straight to the Mesh Mixer 3D printing tool and print it from there. Um, if you're going to use this tool, you might want to check out some of my Mesh Mixer videos on how to use Mesh Mixer to, to prepare things for 3D prints. Thanks for watching, and check my other videos out.